Instagram and Pinterest are often overlooked by marketers, which is a big mistake because you can actually generate a lot of traffic and sales from these particular two types of social media. Now, for the uninitiated, I better explain that Instagram and Pinterest are picture-based media. And they cater mostly for a female audience and are generally reached via smartphones. So let's look at each of these in a bit more detail. First of all, Instagram. Now, Instagram is an app that's growing in popularity. It has over 300 million users and it's adding more every day. Now, at its most basic, Instagram is an image sharing app and a fairly low quality one at that. But that's not to say it can't form a key part of your social media strategy. In fact, some really big companies are using Instagram to get their message across. Companies like Sharpie, Starbucks and Target, to name but a few. And sports teams like the LA Clippers basketball team are heavy Instagram users too. And there are two good uses that you can put Instagram to. One is influencer marketing and the other is local marketing. Influencer marketing means you find someone who already has a large following on Instagram and has established themselves as an authority. And these people will have the ability to sway the opinions of a large group of followers, which of course is where you eventually want to be. So instead of spending months or years trying to reach this point, why not piggyback on the success of someone who's already got there? Or to put it another way, why not see if you can't get someone to post on your behalf to their audience? Of course, there needs to be something in it for them, and this could mean that you pay them, you promote them on another social media in exchange for them promoting you, you know, something like an ad swap, uh, but on social media rather than email. Or you could just try targeting influential members of the public and hope that they'll like your brand enough to do it for free, although that doesn't happen very often, if I'm honest. Likewise, when you've built up a large Instagram following, you can offer to post for other people in your niche in return for them posting for you in another media so you can spread your net a bit wider. Instagram is also great for local audiences. And this is because the pictures have an optional location tag which you can use to help users geolocate your bricks and mortar store. And this can be very useful for drumming up business. So say, for example, you have a hairdresser's or a salon. You could ask your clients if you could take a photo of them with their new hairdo and post that on Instagram and ask them to do the same if they have an Instagram account. So you're going to spread the word out to all their friends and followers. Now, Instagram is a perfect match for Twitter as the two sites use the same type of hashtag and it's easy to link an Instagram photo into a tweet. Now let's talk about Pinterest, because Pinterest is slightly different. It's still based around pictures, but they use it in slightly different ways. Essentially, Pinterest works by creating mood boards, and a mood board is essentially a collage made up of images and other materials that you've either created yourself or you found on the web. For example, one of the most popular types of boards that users will create are wedding boards. And when an engaged couple begin planning their wedding, they'll often start by creating a Pinterest board and then looking for inspiration. They'll look at boards created by other users and search for ideas for wedding dresses, wedding locations, table decorations, wedding cakes, suits, etc. Or they may create separate boards for each of those things. And there are many ways that Pinterest gets used by marketers. For example, you could showcase a new web design or app UI. You could have ideas for interior design. You can put together inspirational images to get people to keep fit if you're in the fitness niche. You could have things like moves or goal physiques, etc. You can keep customers updated with your brand in a more visual way. 
you could perhaps if you have a, a clothing site you could have fashion and outfit ideas if you're a tattoo artist you could showcase tattoo ideas and much more now beyond the basic features there are also some more advanced options and tools on Pinterest that are going to be especially useful for marketers and one of them is rich pins now rich pins as it says here on the page are pins that include extra information right on the pin itself and there are six types of rich pins there's app movie recipe article product and place and if you come here to this page business.pinterest.com forward slash en forward slash rich hyphen pins you can see it explains all about them and you can click the links to uh, get more information in detail on all of them finally Pinterest also provides a large amount of analytics data. Now to get this, you'll need to convert your personal account to a business account and at the same time, you'll need to verify your account. From there, you'll be able to see what pins are getting pinned from your website or your blog. This in turn lets you see which content is really performing well and engaging your audience. And there are other advantages of making this switch too. Can you promote your blog or business with a personal account? Well, of course you can, to an extent, but there are some considerable advantages of making the switch. To start with, Pinterest actually requires you to make your Pinterest account a business one if you intend on using it for profit. A brand new feature of Pinterest is Pinterest Ads. And as the name would suggest, it enables you to actually buy advertising on the Pinterest platform. And this is brand new, so not very many marketers are using it at the moment. And you can find out more at ads.pinterest.com. So there you go, just some ways that you can use Instagram and Pinterest in your marketing mix.